Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of HR Mentorship Learning Series. Tonight, we'll be looking at a topic we have titled Personal Effectiveness for HR Professionals. Sometimes people reach out to me and say, how do you cope? How are you able to do so many things and still get this kind of results? One of the my key secrets is what I really is going to share this evening. Personal effectiveness. You will always see that if you are effective personally, you'll be able to get all the important things in your life done excellently, and you'll be able to manage situations and reports. Tonight, our facilitator is someone who has come multiple times to this prestigious platform, and she is always eager, excited to teach. Her name is Irene Ewemen Obagu. And just because of some of us who may not be well acquainted with her, I will read to us about her in brief. She's an human resource professional, a talent builder, people and culture advocate, learning and development enthusiast. She's a tech recruiter. She's also a coach, a speaker, and very importantly and dearly to, she's a personnel psychologist. Let me also share a few things about her educational background. She has a bachelor's of education in guidance and counseling, so she's a counselor. She also has a master's in personnel psychology from the University of Ibado. Anytime from now, she should just put up a slide and not wait for me to finish the citation. Let me mention a few places and roles she has handled in a career that has spanned well over 10 years. She used to be an insurance operation executive with Capital Trust Insurance Brokers. Then she transited to Human Resources and she held the Office of Human Resource Advisor within the same organization, Capital Trust Group. Then she held the position of corporate service and administration. Subsequently, she became a consultant, HR consultant to be specific, with Novelty Multiservice Limited. And then she became the HR and admin manager at CloudFlex Computing Services Limited, where she was until the very last day of last month. She's in a new position now. Maybe she will mention the location and the organization by herself. I read, I need to see your PowerPoint before I can step down. You know, I love seeing PowerPoint slides. Okay. <laughs> okay Ladies sir. and gentlemen, with all the emoticons, the emojis, the accolades we can muster, let's welcome yet again speaking to us on personal effectiveness for HR professionals. My sister, my friend, my colleague, my counselor, my psychologist, <laughs> my coach, Irene. Love it. <laughs> Ah, mm -hmm. thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Hmm. Okay, I mean, you like you can set somebody up. Or if I'm your counselor and your coach, hey, <laughs> that means my portfolio is huge. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for having me today again. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you for sharing your evening with me. Um, like I like to say, I am only here to coordinate this topic. I am not a guru, I'm still a learner. We learn every day. I'm of the school of thought that learning never exhausts the mind. So thank you everyone as we dive into it. And um, I hope we're going to learn a few things. Learn, unlearn and relearn. I'm also here to learn. I'm only here to coordinate this conversation. So like I like to be sure that um, we're here together. I'd like to see our response in the chat box, how are you feeling today? Is a wet day in Lagos? Where are you joining us from? Would like to know before we dive into it. Sis, I just care or more tired. Nice to see. Yeah, raining day. It's been a wet day. It's been a wet day. Okay, thank you, everyone. Wow, Docas from Lagos. Yes, I can see all the emoticons and emojis. Thank you, everyone. So let's dive into it. So today we're looking at the topic, personal effectiveness for HR professionals. You'll agree with me that um, for us to be effective, even in managing people, like we are like, we take, basically we're like medical doctors. We take care of people, whether we like it or not. We are solution providers. We are 
we, we help people to cope and grapple with the challenges of work and workplace. So as individuals and as professionals, it is important that we are effective in our own way so that we can function better in our role and in guiding and directing the people aspect of the business. So that's why I'm so passionate about this topic um, tonight. So as we dive into it, oh, okay. Um, Mary, you might be from Lagos. Yes, nice to see you. Okay, thank you, everyone. You have stopped sharing your screen, ma'am. I'm going to share again. Please, please, can yeah. you let me roll from your end? I don't, it's not moving from my end. You need to share the updated slide with me. You can see it now. Click on the slide and then press next on your computer. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's moving now. All right. Sir. Okay, so uh, by way of introduction um, to the topic, effectiveness is something we come across every time. Even when we are posting for roles and we're searching for um, um, talent, even when we are applying ourselves, we're looking for somebody that is effective and that can deliver on this role. It's a buzzword. We come across it every time and every day. So what we look for in people is we are trying to see people that have the characteristics that are associated with effectiveness. We know that effective people will be motivated. They're organized people. They know what they want and they often go for what they want. So basically, why we are going to be discussing what is important for us, we understand that self-efficacy and um, development is very paramount. If we are going to grow as a professional, we have to also develop ourselves personally. So in this webinar, we are going to be looking at the definition, the importance. Why are we even here talking about personal effectiveness tonight? What does it even matter? So we're going to be looking at that tonight. So what does personal effectiveness mean to you? Yeah, I like I said, I'm only here to coordinate. I'd like to see in the chat comment section, what does personal effectiveness really mean to you? If you're going to say you're personally effective or you're going to say somebody's personally effective, what does it mean to you? I'd like to see your response in the chat session because this should be interactive as much as possible. I just, if you're raising your hand, you could just drop the chat. Thank you. Oh, result oriented, Elizabeth Owako, thank you. It's only one person that has responded. So if you are going to say I am somebody like me, I'm personally effective, or you want to judge yourself and recommend that you're personally effective, what would you say? Yeah, result-oriented, great. Yeah, effectiveness, result-oriented, structure-oriented, production-oriented. Thank you, Joseph Olu. Fantastic, fantastic. Please, let's get it coming so that I know that we are ready for this evening and the code is not affecting us. Wow, getting the best out of ourselves. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. Okay, so we are not far from what it is. Personal effectiveness is an approach to success. It involves utilizing all our energies. You know, so what? How do we? How do we rate success? How do we? What is success to us? If we're going to interpret what success is, what is it to us? So it is an approach that involves us using our energy, skill, and motivation to develop and reach our goals, that goals that we basically set for ourselves. Individual with good personal effectiveness tend to constantly strive to achieve more, advance in career, and grow personally and professionally. So when we are, in, when we are personally effective or self-efficacy, will mean that, okay, we are constantly achieving the goals that we have set for ourselves. We are constantly developing and growing in our career. And that's, in a way, is going to reflect in everything that we do. 
it sort of affects even the people around us because our personal effectiveness is all encompassing. It affects our social life, our family life, our work life. Basically, everything about us will reflect how effective we are. So when we demonstrate personal effectiveness, we we'll keep working with all the resources available to make the progress we aspire to. There's a certain level of progress we want to get to. There's a certain level of achievement we want. So our personal effectiveness is more like uh, a measure and a drive that helps us to achieve those progress and those um, dreams that we aspire. When we use the help and support of others, we can give back, we can receive help. It also involves managing ourselves with confidence. We understand that it is our responsibility to take the necessary step for growth and change. So we are constantly looking at for what makes us better. We are constantly looking out more like we are always learning and improving, you know. So as individual, at individual level, although self-efficacy would mean different things to different people, what self-efficacy means to me is not what it's going to mean to the next person. What I would call success is not what the next person is going to call success. So we have our desires, we have our aspirations, we have what we want to achieve. So what personal effectiveness basically means for us or means to us is that we have our own standards of achieving success. And we constantly work towards peak performance with a different, which is of course different from every individual, just like they always say, even identical twins, they have their different needs and their different um, aspirations. So that's basically what personal effectiveness does for us. So summarily, personal effectiveness, summarily, personal effectiveness is just like what we achieving what we set out to achieve. It is just like summary of everything that has to do with our efforts and our achievements and what we put to it. So why is personal effectiveness important to us? Why are we here today talking about personal effectiveness? Self-efficacy is a trait. It is commonly associated with positivity and happiness. You know, when you achieve results and you're delivering, you, there's this kind of feel good feeling that you have. It sort of activates the happiness hormone in the body and you're feeling like, yes, you know, just the way we feel bad if we set out to achieve something and we don't achieve it. So it is an important part of leading a, a fulfilling and a successful life, which that is why it is important to us. So that's one of the reasons. So another reason why uh, personal effectiveness is important is for professional standpoint, it is an important skill that means you, you'll be more productive and motivated and constantly achieve your goals and progress in whatever role. So it's not until you are a people manager or you're an HR manager or something that you can now achieve uh, basic um, progress. So whatever uh, professional level you are at, entry level, mid-level, managerial level, your personal effectiveness is very important. It is important that you master the skills that you need to be productive, what motivates you. It is important that you constantly achieve your goals and the progress, whatever your role is. So applying self-efficacy in your life is important because it helps you to feel more fulfilled and accomplished, which is good for positive mental health. Like I said, when you seem to achieve results, you're happy with yourself. There's this feel-good feeling where you know that, okay, you, are, you have set out to achieve something and you are achieving something indeed. So that is very important. That's why we need personal effectiveness so that we can drive mental health when we feel positive our, about ourselves, it helps us to be healthy. It boosts our feeling, it boosts our mentality, it boosts our connectedness. So we don't have this inferiority complex. Sometimes when you don't even seem to achieve something, that's where imposter syndrome starts, tend to um, set in. You're doubtful of yourself. You're wondering, can I really do this? You know. So people who understand themselves, they have the ability to handle unexpected situations better. They live more fulfilled lives, have more faith and confidence, which is essential part of success and satisfaction. So we, when we achieve things that we're set out to achieve, 
when we're personally effective, it helps us to be better people. It helps us to be better version of ourselves. Like I always say, we are on this uh, planet, we're on this part of the world in our own small corner to make uh, some sort of impact. So when you are personally effective, you, there's this feel good, there's this sense of satisfaction. You are confident that yes, you have achieved something and you are on the right path. So why is it, why is personal effectiveness important? It's also because we've, when we focus on self-efficacy, it is also important, it allows us to sit down and really think about what we want to achieve in life, work and relationship. So when I want to check if I'm effective, I'm checking the things that matter to me. Life, work, relationship, how do I relate to people? How do I feel? Like I did mention, when you have this personal effectiveness, it sort of boosts your mental health. You are able to show confidence. So when you focus on self-efficacy, it helps you to achieve a lot of things with work, life, and relationship. It is best to work with people with good personal productivity skill because they are motivated, committed, organized, and always deliver on their promise. Now, why you want to pay attention to your personal effectiveness is nobody wants to work with somebody that drags them back. Everybody wants to connect with somebody that is personally effective. So when you're personally effective, you see that you are the kind of go-to person. Everybody is looking for help. They remember that, oh, okay, if I need support, I have to, if I get to um, Irene, I'll get support. So you are, you, there's this energy around you. There's this vibe of, oh, she'll give you the answer that you want. She'll be able to help out. She might give you an idea. So that is why uh, personal effectiveness is very important. So what are the personal skills that are required for personal effectiveness? Because yes, we've been talking why we should be personally effective, what we need to be personally effective, and we've seen that, okay, when we're personally effective, it boosts our mental health. It makes people to want to connect with us more. So that's, but there are certain skills that we must have for us to be personally effective. Personal effectiveness will depend on what you want to achieve and where you, your individual skill lies. Yes, I can come here and come and tell you what personal effectiveness is, why should be personally effective, but it's also important to know the skills. And to also know where your, your individual strength and your skill lies. People with good personal effectiveness have certain traits in common, which are outlined below. So when you have personal effectiveness, that you have self-confidence. Like I did mention, when you achieve results, there's this feel-good thing. It boosts your confidence. It makes you know that, okay, you, you have something to deliver. As much as it is boosting your self-confidence, it helps you to also build self-capability and self-confidence. Personal effectiveness helps you to manage time. It helps you to know what to spend time on, what not to spend time on. It helps you to identify what is more important, what is valuable. It helps you to plan your time. So you're not wasting time doing what you should not be doing at the right time or doing what you should be doing at the right time at the wrong time. It gives you an optimistic outlook of life. So um, it helps you to see life in a positive light. You are able to, it helps your sense of judgment. It sort of helps you to build resilience. So you don't lose hope or you lose a dislike of any um, mistake or challenges. It gives you hope. It helps you to know that, okay, whatever you're going through at whatever time is just a face. So it helps you to build optimistic outlook on life. So it helps your self-motivation. As a personally effective person, you are naturally self-motivated. And it, this is also important for us in HR because here we are coordinating the people aspect of the business. Like I always say, whether your role is um, HRBP or not, as a human resource person, you are a business partner. While the management is strategizing strategies, I've always been strategies and said executed by people. So you have the self-motivation to drive people, to help people achieve their goals. If you're not motivated, how do you want to motivate people? So personal effectiveness skill is self-motivation that you need to develop and have. You have to be emotionally intelligent. 
so that you are able to understand your environment. You are able to understand people's feelings. You're able to know where people are coming from. It helps your sense of judgment and how you relate with people. It helps your, it's it, um, one of the skills of personally effective uh, person. It's also excellent interpersonal relationship management. You're able to understand people are different. You understand the principle of individual differences. You're able to realize that, okay, this person, the way, just the way somebody will see a cup is half full, another person will see it as full, you know? So you are able to understand where people are coming from and be able to put yourself in their shoes. You know, you, you don't misjudge people or misinterpret people. You're able to read the room, so to say. So um, that's with interpersonal relationship management. It also helps you to understand your strengths and your limits. So you don't push yourself beyond what you should be pushing yourself. You know what your what your strength is, where your strength lies. You're able to know your boundary. You're able to know when to push and when to stay where you are. You you don't double into what um you can deliver on. Basically, if you're personally effective. So personal effectiveness in the workplace. Why is it important as HR professional? Again, I'll be looking in the chat room so that I just don't talk and talk and talk. Don't mind me, I talk very fast. <laughs> so personal effectiveness in the workplace. What do you think personal effectiveness in the workplace is? In the workplace, if you want to say, okay, you're personally effective or somebody is personally effective. So we have talked about personal effectiveness. We've talked about what it is. We've talked about the skills. Now we're bringing it to work. So personal effectiveness in the workplace, I would also like to have our views and see our comments. What is personal effectiveness in the workplace? I'll just pause a bit and look at the chat room. I'm actually looking. I would like to hear from us. Exactly, Grace, if you're not motivated, how do you motivate people? Very thought-provoking. I agree. I agree. Thank you. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I need to be sure that I'm not here all by myself. I need to be sure that the code in Lagos is not affecting us. What is personal effectiveness in the workplace? I'm looking. Yes, personal effectiveness is doing the right thing at the right time. Maybe solar. Thank you. Yes, you're correct. Because when you are personally effective at work, you're not going to leave tasks undone. You're going to ensure that your tasks are delivered just right in time and when expected. Yes, Elizabeth, thank you. Being able to deliver at every task. Yes, I agree. Thank you. Okay, so in the workplace, just like we have rightly said, we're very correct. Personal effectiveness is all about performing to the best of your abilities. Please mark the word best of your abilities. So sometimes when we look at some tasks in the workplace, we actually have the ability to perform beyond that. But we stop at some level, either because we just feel, yeah, that's what's expected of us after all but could go a step further and perform to our best abilities. Personal effectiveness in the workplace will translate to managing your time well, staying on task, meeting deadlines, and making sure that all of your work is done to the best of your ability. So that's basically what personal effectiveness in the workplace is. Personal effectiveness is when we're able to deliver on task, just as it is, and we're even able to surpass what is expected of us. So we have looked at, okay, personal effectiveness, we looked at what it is at workplace, but how do we even know that we are personally effective? What are the success factors? Again, like I said, this is going to be interactive. I'm only here to coordinate. If you were going to tell me what you're looking out for in a personally effective person, what are the success factors you're looking out for? Like what is going to make you agree that somebody is personally effective or what 
would you say is making you personally effective? Again, I'm looking at the chat box. Oh, okay. Effectiveness, yeah. Wow. Ogalu, I mean, personal effectiveness refers to an individual's ability to successfully achieve goals, achieve their goals and objective while maintaining a balance. Wow, I may not be able to read all of what is here. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to go back um, to my slide now so that we see what the success factors are. Okay, so the success factor to personal effectiveness is knowledge. Yes, knowledge, what to do. So the knowledge, knowing what to do and doing it well and doing it at the right time is one of the success factor because you cannot be effective if you don't even know what to do. If you don't know what to do, you don't know where to start. So if you know what to do, then you basically are able to know where to start. Another success factor is skills and ability. So I got this, while I was preparing this slide, I, I got this and it actually caught my attention. So it was adapted from fusion.org. So um, skill and ability was broke, allot, allotted 20 to 30%. So your skill and ability, yeah, you have the knowledge of what to do, you have realized, you now you have identified what to do. So the skills and abilities to do what you know that you want to do is also very important. So the action that you the, the action that you take here yeah. yes the knowledge of what to do the action that you take how to do so how do you do what you want to do so if we're going to give ourselves like break it down into percentage so 20 percent of personal effectiveness is your actions how do you do what you want to do so your paradigms mental habits your past past perspectives, how you see things is 80%. So while, while I was um, working on this, I just remember that, yes, it's just the saying that you, people, whatever you react to, you have control over your reaction. Sometimes we tend to react to external factors, but the truth of the matter is internally, we have control over what we react to. So as a personally effective person, beyond knowing what to do, and the actions to take and how to do what to do is your paradigms, your mental habits, your perception about life, your attitude. How do you see things? You, you, when, when I saw this, it actually just resonated and made a lot of sense to me. So beyond what I am doing and how I am doing is my mental habits, is my, men, is my perception, is my paradigms, my paradigm shift which is why this was rated 80 percent sometimes when you think you cannot do something then you cannot do it so it is one thing to know what to do it is another thing to have the skills and ability to know how to do it then it is another thing to even have the mental habits to want to do it there are sometimes that we have some sort of dreams and we probably share with people and they're like oh that dream is too big you know if we allow our mental habits to just as take that back that takes this 80 percent we're looking at away from our effectiveness so the desire to want to do why do you want to do is it all uh, buckles up or bundles into your paradigms your mental habit your perception about life your attitude your desire to do whatever you want to do is a whole 80 percent of what makes you personally effective so if we give 20, I'm sticking to 20% and 80%, though the, the author says 20 to 30%, but for my own, I think I'll stick to 20% of, yes, the skill and ability for me to do what I want to do. Then 80% to the mental ability, my mindset, how I feel about what I want to do and how I intend to do it which sums up to overall of 100%. So our success factor of measuring our personal effectiveness is one, knowledge of what to do. Two, skill and ability. How do we want to do what we have identified to do? 
the most importantly, our mindsets, our paradigms of the mind. Like, yes, we have seen what we want to do. We have identified how we want to do it. But the mind, if the mind does not conceive it, we can't achieve it, basically. So that is our success factor. I, I, I'm dwelling on this because it's very important. So while we're talking about mindset and focus, we now want to look at how we view things. Yes, we have identified that, okay, is one thing to acknowledge, to identify what we want to do. It's another thing to know how we want to do what we want to do. Then our mental disposition is also part of the effectiveness. So how do we view things? This quote also got my attention. We always get what we focus on, which is the truth. If we continually build our mind to see an image, over time, the image becomes real. So how we view things is very important. It is very important what we focus on. So we're looking at we're looking at um, what do you want to do? So how do, you, how do you see what you want to do? What are the limitations you're looking at? Would you rather stay depressed and fatigued? Would you rather focus on the problems and dangers? Would you focus on the failures, the weakness, the obstacles? Where people are saying, I can't, what would you rather say? Would you rather be judgmental? When, some, when others are seeing the cup as half full, what would you see? So on the other side of my slide, I have, what do you want? And what you want? Would you rather see limitations or possibilities? Would you rather see depression or being vital? Would you rather see problems or opportunities, failure, success, obstacle, innovations, when people are saying, I can't? Would you rather say, what can I or what can we do? When people are being judgmental, oftentimes we, we just hear situations or we hear a matter from one side and we don't even hear the other side and we're already concluding and being judgmental. So when people are being judgmental, would you rather focus on being on, on understanding the situation, having a perspective of the situation? When people see the cup as half empty, would you rather want to provide solution that, okay, yes, this cup is half empty, how can we feed the cup? When people are assuming, would you rather check for clarity? Where others are seeing limited growth, would you see continuous learning? So it is important what we focus on. What we focus on contributes to our effectiveness. What we focus on helps us to know how effective we are. Because the truth of the matter is, our energy level is what sums up our um, productivity and effectiveness. What energy level do, do, we, do, do we have? So it's very good we look at these two sides and decide which of the side we want to be. Of course, the first side does not show any sort of um, effectiveness because when you're depressed or you see limitations, how do you want to be effective? Definitely, you're not going to be motivated and those are not one of the traits of uh, personally effective people like we have seen. Expectations are powerful triggers for the brain. So that's the summary for this slide. Because your expectation, what you expect, that what triggers what um, the brain conceives or what the brain um, will process. So personal effectiveness. I have... Um, Another breakdown here, how do you measure your personal effectiveness? 40% of execution, 30% of map, and 30% of direction. So direction, direction is um, values, life roles, personal mission goals, work accountability. So if 
you're going to um direct your life what are your values we all have core values we all have things that drive us we have life rules we have um our personal mission so we have what we want to achieve we have what we want to achieve and we set goals to achieve this from our values we identify our life role so when we have life role, what is our mission how do we intend to achieve these roles that we have identified for ourselves how do we intend to implement these values then we set our goals it sums up to our work accountability So when we talk about mapping, when we talk about mapping, what is the plan or action step needed? This, this means prioritizing. We prioritize our activities. We map out what we want to achieve. We map out how we want to achieve what we want to achieve. Yes, it's one thing to identify the direction we want to go. It's another thing to now know how we want to go. So it's time to take a seat, sit back and look at, okay, this is what I want to do. So how do I achieve this thing? It's time to map out our um line of action, plan our activities, and see how we achieve these goals that we have set for ourselves and our personal mission. So execution. Personal organization plus action, if plus keeping the course is the sum total of our personal effectiveness. So if we are organized personally, we have identified the direction we want to go. We have mapped out um, our activities and the priorities we need to take to get to where we are going. So how do we execute this plan? How do we execute the plan we intend to achieve? So basically our personal organization plus the action, the steps that we take, plus our keeping on course without distraction, not being distracted. Yes, we have, when you're personally effective, you stay on course, like you follow your plans. Of course, at some point, there might be time, there might be need to augment or alternate. Be, keeping on course doesn't mean being rigid. As much as you're keeping on course, there's also the, the space of um, evaluation. As you're keeping on course, are you keeping on course on the right track? It is also very important because when you're personally effective, that's when you're able to identify that, okay, something is wrong, or you need to pause, or you need to stop, or you need to continue. So this is also very important as a measure of personal effectiveness. So why do we need to stay on course? Why do we need um, direction, mapping, and um, execution? One, because we don't know what, it's, what is really important to us. Everything seems important if we don't have um, a direction. If we don't map out our plans, if we don't map out our actions, how do you, identify, how do you prioritize? How would you know that this should come first or this should come last? So it is important for us to, to map out our um, activities and what we want to do so that we're able to identify what is important to us so, and how to execute what is important to us. Now, it is why, another reason why it is also important for us to do that is because, is because everything seems important. We have to do everything. Sometimes we just have a lot on our plates. And you don't even, you are wondering, okay, they say I should prioritize. Okay, I want to manage time. But there's a lot to be done. There's a lot to be achieved. So everything is important. And you're wondering, okay, which is not important? Which should you re remove? So why we need this um, personal effectiveness is for us to be able to identify what, yes, everything seems important, but one at some point, or the other must be more important than the other. So we must set priorities. So that also takes me to 
our circle. We have other people. Yes, everybody reach out to you. You have like a lot of people in your DM. Some people don't even know that you have not even had time to read the messages and they think you don't want to attend to them. So we have other people reaching out to you. Unfortunately, they see you as doing everything because they know that you are this go-to person. Ah, go and meet this person. They don't even know what your schedule is. They don't even know what you are struggling with. They don't even know what you want to achieve. They don't know what your timeline is like. But because you are this go-to person, everybody always wants to come to you. Everybody just believes that once they come to you, give them a solution or something. You know? Unfortunately, they see you doing everything. So they expect you to do everything. Not minding. It's just like Oga okay, Yemi now. Everybody sees him that, ah, I can imagine how his DM is like. Yes, they see him everywhere. They see him on the platforms. Nobody knows what he's doing. And he also has to plan his time for him to be personally effective. So they see you doing everything and they expect you to do everything, which is the reason why you have to pay attention to your personal effectiveness. What are you doing? Doing everything keeps us so busy. We don't have time to think about what is really important to us. And that's the truth. So this, um, like, this also helps you to watch how you relate with people. Are you a people pleaser at your own detriment? It will not um, help you to be effective. If you're going to be personally effective, you have to identify, you, you have to strike a balance. Like, you have to reach a point where you know that, okay, at this point, this is what I can do for people. At this, at this time, I have to focus on this. So doing everything keeps us so busy. We don't have time to think about what is really important to us. So it is important that we pay attention to what we do so that we can be personally effective. So um, in personal effectiveness, it also has to do with our time management. So how do we manage time? We have, so I'm sharing this um, quadrant with us. It's a time management quadrant that has really helped a lot if you actually pay attention to it. We, we have to identify the things that we do and classify them. You know, what is urgent and what is not urgent? We have to identify what is important and what is not important. So the quadrant one has crises, emergencies, present problems, deadline-driven project, last-minute preparation, well, uh, those are urgent things that we perceive as urgent and important. So now we look at quadrant two. Quadrant two is preparation, planning, prevention, value creation, capability improvement, relationship building, true recreation and relaxation. Then if you look at quadrant three, we have interruptions. Those are, that is the not important um, quadrant. We have interruptions, some callers, so me, like as I'm sitting down here and I'm putting calls on my phone and, you know, so we have to pay attention to those things. Some meetings, yeah, we have some meetings that are very important. We have some that can wait. So we just have to identify in our time management matrix, what quadrant we want to focus on, the popular activities. And quadrant four has busy work, trivia activities, some calls or emails, escape activities, time wasters. So we have to pay attention to this quadrant. Whatever we do in our time management quadrant translates to the value we get. It translates to our effectiveness and productivity. So I have this um, time and life matrix and mindset. So the kind of mindset that we have also affects how we manage our time. So if we have a mindset of, okay, attending to trivia things, it will affect our productivity. Our uh, paradigm should be around how to uh, manage our time to be more effective. So I also have a quadrant here where I have urgent and not urgent, important and not important. In my quadrant one, in my quadrant one, Time plus energy is equals return. 
while in quadrant two, time plus energy. If you look at the, the picture, the amount of time and energy you apply to necessity is equal to the return you have. But when you look at the extraordinary activities in um, in the in extraordinary productivity in quadrant two, you see that the time and energy that you 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 put into work sort of like triples in return. So when you are in the distraction quadrant, you also see that the time and energy that you invest is less. The time the return is like one third of the time and energy you have invested. And when you're in the waste zone, like the time wasting zone, all your time and energy that you have wasted, the return is actually zero. So you basically don't achieve anything. So for the purpose of this uh, presentation, we're going to be looking at where we should remain, the quadrants that makes us more effective, where we should, the quadrants that we should focus on, basically, you know? So I, I think I would even like to have this to be interactive. I'll be looking in the chat section. So having looked at the um, time mark trees and the time and life uh, mindsets quadrant, which quadrant do you think is more productive and more important for us to stay to be more effective? I'm looking in the chat box. I want to see. Which quadrant should we stay to be more effective? I like to read from us. I like to know that this is interactive and we are not um, we're making something out of this evening. So if you are in the if we look at our quadrants, where do we think we should spend? Yes, not urgent matches. Okay, we're going to look at that in a, in a bit and see. So which quadrant should we stay? Okay, I'm going to put up the quadrant again. Okay, so which of the quadrants? The time management quadrants. I'm looking at the chat box. Exactly. Um, Adjoka says, yes, she's going to ruthlessly focus her energy in where she can get most results. Of course, if I were you, that's what I would do. Okay, Elizabeth, I have the quadrants up again. Okay, I'm moving to the next quadrant. Oh, okay, second quadrant, yes. Okay, so we'll look at that in a bit and see which of the quadrants we should stay at. Okay, so your paradigm, your mindset, having a look at the four quadrants, having a look at what is urgent and what we should focus our attention on. You can see, yeah, Shagun said second quadrant, Manuel second quadrant, yes. So we're going to see which quadrant makes us more effective. So our paradigm, the mindset that we have, what do we focus on? That's why I was asking what quadrants would we focus on? Do you focus on efficiency before effectiveness? I would like to really, I would like to have our thought on this. What should we really focus on? Should we focus on being effective, uh, efficient, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> or being effective? Yeah, Ajoka, yes. Even if it's only one project you can close out in a day, it's better than plenty of activities without results. Yeah, true, I agree. I agree, absolutely. 
Yes, uh, brace, being efficient, yes. That's very important. Because when we're efficient, then we ultimately will be effective. That's just the truth. Okay, so that takes me to my next question. Are you driven by the clock or by compass? Yeah, so are we focusing on time or are we looking at the compass of time? How is time going? How is the time rotating? Are, are we just looking at, oh, it's one o'clock, oh, it's two o'clock? Are we looking at what we are able to achieve per the hour? So what should we focus on? Exactly. Absolutely. Efficiency is the process where effectiveness is the result. Absolutely. Yeah, Grace, the compass. I agree. Because if I focus on the clock, I'll just be sitting down here. I'm looking at my time. It's I'll just be looking at the time. I'll be looking at the clock. True. True. Oh, see that? Yeah, the compass. Thank you. Okay, so why we agree? I like the fact that we're agreeing tonight. Yeah? Efficiency. Ultimately, we'll see effectiveness when we're efficient. And when we focus on the compass, when we're driven by the compass, not the not the clock, because the clock is just um an object. Really, it's just an object that helps us to record the time. It's just an object that shows us the time. But the compass, if we focus on the compass, we're able to identify what we're able to achieve per time, not focusing on the clock. That's also very, very important. Okay, so do you have a good balance between busyness and taking care of the assets important to you? But sometimes we are busy, like very busy. But what it, when we ask ourselves, what are we really busy doing? This busyness that we are busy in, all this hustling and bustling, especially Lagos hustle and bustle, what are we busy doing really? What does our business translate to? Does it translate to taking care of the assets that are important to us? It's also important that we, we, we condition our minds. Oh, see that again, I'm finding myself in the people zone. Mm. Okay, we'll look at this later. We'll look at this. Oh, see that we'll, We'll look at this later. We'll take contributions. Anybody that is um seeing the chat and willing to contribute, we'll get a contribution. Please, I'm noting Osita's question. He sees himself in the people please zone, and he would like our um suggestions, our ideas on how to pull out of there. Osita, that is noted. We'll look at it together. Okay, so do we have a good balance between business and taking care of the assets is important? So while we focus our mind, our attention, and our uh, everything on is important. Again, our paradigm is what is going to make us to be more effective than any other thing. Effective individuals avoid quadrant three and four. So we're correct when we stop when we chose quadrant two. So why do we avoid quadrant three and four? Quadrant three and four are not significant. Whether urgent or not. They also reduce the size of the quadrant by one by spending more time on quadrant two. We need a tool to promote, motivate, and really assist us in spending the time we need in quadrant two on prevention rather than disasters because when we spend our time on prevention, it makes us proactive. If we wait for it, for it to get to disaster state, then we'll be reactive and we'll start jittering and running after scatter. The, the popularity of responding to other people's urgent but inconsequential priority in quadrant three, that's what Osita is saying, yeah? We, we, as much as we want to respond to people, as, once, as much as we want to be helpful, we also have to watch out how we respond. Other people's emergencies sometimes are not our emergency. It doesn't mean that we are not being sensitive. It doesn't take away the empathy part of us. We still have to be empathic. But the most important thing is, are we spending more time 
on other people's urgency. You know, spending more prior, um, priorities, priority and spending more time in quadrant three. If we spend more time in quadrant three, as we have said, it's not going to make us effective. There's this joy of feeling that quadrant four will bring. It will threaten the outcome of quadrant two. Yes, you are feeling like, oh, you have been able to help somebody. You have been able to achieve other things. We're not saying don't help people. We're saying watch how much time. The time, Basically, the timing, the compass is very important. Is it the right time? What are you leaving to attend to what you're attending to? Attending to other people's needs at that particular time, does it make you effective? Does it make you, does it, does it add up to your personal um, map that you created at the beginning? You know, we have um, the knowledge of what to do. Then we have the mapping and the execution. Yeah, you know what to do, right? You have identified what you do. And here you are spending more time attending to people. Here you are spending more time living what you have identified to do, you know? So it is important that we pay attention to what what's we invest our time, what eats up our time, where do we spend more of our time. It's what is going to ultimately translate into how effective we are. So um our primary center, which is self-awareness and conscience, may give us a level of internal stability, direction, and wisdom, allowing you to utilize your autonomous while remaining true to what is essential. Yes, we, we have our self-awareness. We have our conscience. Yes, your conscience tells you, oh, this is right to do. You know, But then your self-awareness should give you the direction, the wisdom that will allow you to to that, that will give you the autonomy to remain true to what is essential so that you are not distracted. Because if you want to be effective, you have to reach yourself of distraction. If you you are distracted, there won't be any, you, you won't have as much results to show. Distraction is basically going to affect your uh, effectiveness, you know? So um, the whole of what we have been saying about personal effectiveness, we have identified what it is, why we should be personally effective. I summed up everything about personal effectiveness with Stephen Covey's uh, quote, which says, the key is not to prioritize what is on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. You know, to be personally effective, we have to schedule our priorities. We have to know what comes first and what, what comes next and what comes next before what comes last, you know? The, the key is not for us to prioritize what our schedule should look like, but it's to schedule our priorities so that we are able to deliver effectively and if, if efficiently. So personal effectiveness is a key trait among successful mm -hmm. people and professionals. And being able to own the skills necessary to demonstrate it will make a big difference. Having an excellent understanding of your own strength and motivation takes time, but the benefit of this awareness and drive are endless. So we understand that, okay, for us to be personally effective, there are some key traits that we have to pay attention to. We have to, be, to build our self-confidence. We have to manage our time effectively. You know, we have to watch our interpersonal relationship with people, personal effectiveness, we have to develop our emotional skills, you know, our emotional quotients and everything. But the ultimate of it all is that we have to pay attention to what is important. When once we're able to identify what is important, that takes me to my earlier slide. We're able to know that, okay, this is what should come first. And I'm able to also chart a course, like a pathway to go through what I want to do and how I want to do it. And being able to earn the skills necessary to demonstrate the, this is a difference. It, like it makes a big difference when you're able to identify that, okay, 
um, these are the at, uh, at, attributes, the skills, the attitude you should have to be personally effective. You know, it translates into everything that we do. It helps us to deliver on our jobs. It helps us to deliver on personal relationship with others. It just makes us more at ease and more, um, I'm looking for the word now. It just makes us a better person, really. You know? So um, I don't know if there's anyone that would like to add or teach us something more, something I have missed, something that should be in this um, presentation that is not there. What are your thoughts about personal effectiveness? How do you think we should be effective as people managers? Because we have to build our own personal effectiveness first before we can make other people effective. Some in the chat section, if, if you would like to speak, you can raise up your hand. Let's take your contribution. Let's see if there's somebody that wants to help us attend to Osita. Osita had said um, he finds himself in the people pleasing zone. What can he do to get out of that? So we'd like to get your thoughts, your contributions, your recommendations. Oh, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so who is ready to add one or two things for us? Do we have anybody that is ready? Oh, okay, Grace. Okay, it will be nice to have you. Thank you very much for the amazing training. Um, it was really uh, informative. Thank and you. just to flesh up on, on what you particularly said towards the end of your facilitation about um, a quote by Stephen Covey that the um, thing is not to, um, you said something about prioritizing our something. I can't remember how yes. you put it. And so yeah. I now um, remembered that I had read his book, which is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Oh, people. yeah, Stephen Covey, yeah. Yeah, Stephen Covey, fantastic. author, fantastic book. And yeah. it's one of the books I really uh, delved into in terms of um, building myself up to be efficient. So I would just like to recommend that for those of us who haven't read the book, should please go and yeah, read the book. Yeah, fantastic book. book. To, I agree. Yeah. I agree. So profound, like it will add to the wealth of knowledge that you have shared with us today. So thank you very much. That's my contribution. Yeah, thank you, Grace. I totally agree. If you have not read Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Effective People, you need to get that book. Osita, I'm also recommending that for you. You see, when you're done reading it, you'll realize that, yeah, while you should be helping people, while you should be available to people, you also have to, you need to have your me time, you need to have your own plan and stay on course. That is very important, staying on course. Staying on course. Okay, Um, Emmanuel, um, okay, I'm going to be sharing my phone number, okay, my email address or phone number because I might not be able to share the book with you right away because I need to look in my in my drive for it. Okay, you can chat um Ogayemi up. He just posted his number for a copy of the book. So I don't know if anyone is still willing to add something for us. Okay, so Osita, like I did say that um I'm going to see if somebody is going to be able to answer your question, but I'm going to um just give you a few tips. How do you stay out of being a people pleaser? How do you stay out of being a people pleaser? So it is important that you identify what is important to you. Yes, you might have identified what is important to you and you know that uh, you might have identified what is important to you. You know that this is what you want to do. And you, Oh, sorry, I have uh, people raising their hand. Okay. Adjoka, sorry, I just saw that you were raising your hand. Please unmute. 
So do you want to attend to Osita's question? Do you want to give him ideas, yeah. insights of how to move out of the people pleasant zone and be more effective? Okay. Um, let me try. First of all, I want to thank, thank you, you, Irene. This was this was an amazing session. Even as I listen to you, as I listen to you, I'm trying to rearrange my to-do list for this week in my head now. Just after listening yes, to you, that's very important. I, I <laughs> so, what I want to say to Osita and to myself and several other people is that at the end of the day, if you're an employee, what is important to you is not as important as what is important to your boss. So yes. it might be important so to attend to other people. It might be important to you to make other people comfortable as an HR. It might be important to you to solve other people's problems. But if that is not what your boss expects from you, you're failing. So you might be efficient in running around and sorting out HR issues that you think are important. But you'll never be an effective HR if you're not meeting what is strategic to your immediate line manager or your boss. So the yeah. first thing for me, not the whole theater, is... What is our goal? What is my KPI? What is the strategic exactly. objective that I'm going to deliver on? And I focus on that. So if I write my to-do list, and that is number one, number two, any other thing that comes sits at number three and number four, and if I'm going to leave what I think is strategic that I need to deliver on that is tied to my KPI, if I'm going to leave it for anything at all, it's got to be something very, very urgent. Otherwise, I'll attend to that first, and then every other thing comes second. Of course, because we are in HR, there are some emergencies that will crop up. There are days that what you never plan for will happen. You know you that know. it's an emergency. That you are but you cannot go through your career, no matter how young you are in HR, pleasing people. Because at the end of the day, your appraisal, your promotion, your review, everything about you, your commendations or recommendations are not going to be based on the people that you please. It's going to be based on how your bosses perceive you in terms of what are you contributing. So if you have deadlines that you never meet them because you're busy helping people, if you have projects and you never close them out because you're helping, at the end of the day, when it's time for your appraisal, your scores are going to be looking crazy. So I'll say to him that it's good to please people, but please your boss first. I'll give you a very quick example so we don't take our time. In my previous organization, we're very big on um, data analysis. We're very big on PowerPoint. My boss wants to see the graph showing the... The, the variations that we had, he loves all of that. And of course, we'll deliver it at the end of the month. We do our report. But where I am currently now, I realize that my immediate boss, who I report to, he wants um, feedback instantly. And he doesn't even need a mail. He prefers a WhatsApp. As a matter of fact, if you send him a mail, he will read and he will call you. You understand? If you send me a message on WhatsApp, instead of him taking time to type a reply, he will call you. So he's someone that is very much hands-on, 24-7. He doesn't have time. Um, to, to find out from other people, but at your level, he thinks that, okay, everything that is strategic to the business, whatever comes to your table is passing through and he's not there. He wants to be aware. So if I wanted to be um, efficient, I could spend a lot of time writing a report, doing my graphs, making sure that my analytics are very clear and sent to him, but I won't be effective because that's not the kind of the communication that he wants. So it's for me to understand intelligently that, okay, what kind of communication does he prefer? So I realized that what he prefers is just give me a summary, very brief, like a yeah. chat or an yeah. email, and then you like, break it down. So be emotionally intelligent, be political, be, be understanding of your, your immediate boss's needs, what he requires, what he or she prefers. And that should guide what you're doing, not what other people are. These people that you're referring to, I really don't know, are they the ones that are praising you? Are they the ones recommending you for promotion? They can't be. So please don't let other people use their own KPI hmm, to mess up your own KPI. And then in closing, I want to say, I read. This topic is a topic that a lot of us need because even though we think we're doing right, looking at your matrix, I realize that even myself, I can do much better. I brought my jot out now. When I drop this call, I'll sit down and look at that my to-do list again. There are some things I need to move up, some things I need to move down. So thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, um, Osita, I'm sure that has been helpful. And beyond work, even if it is about um life and people around you yeah we understand the importance of um, social questions we uh, understand the importance of um, having our social cycle because here yeah, at the end of the day uh, our network is our network so you want to say no to people not uh, in a way that they feel bad you want to say no to people explaining to them the reason not really explaining yeah, when it's not convenient, you just basically need to learn to say no. 
and over time people will get to understand that it's not like you don't want to help, but it's not convenient you know we might you might want to talk to me later about that if you don't mind i'm going to share my email address and my phone number you can just send me a chat so that we can close the evening but there are a whole lot of things you could just look at set your priorities look at your um your time create your time quadrant i'm available to teach you how to use the time quadrant identify those things that are important identify those things that are not important and classify them urgent and not urgent by the time you are adopt the um time management matrix every week trust me you're going to be more effective than you had imagined you could be so it's something you might want to look at so i'll be dropping my email address and phone number whichever is convenient for you in the comment section you are very free to send me a message please don't call i can see i think um, somebody saying don't call me just send me a whatsapp message or an email and you can be sure that I'll respond. Thank you, everyone. I don't know if anyone has any other thing to add to the evening. Does any other person have anything to say? Or do we call it a wrap? Okay. So in the absence of... Uh, In the absence of no further deliberation, addition, subtraction, tricks, and tips on personal effectiveness, I think um, we can call it an evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. It was nice having you this evening. Mr. Ali, I, mean, I don't know if you have any other thing to say. Sorry, I mean, I don't know. So do we close? Do you have any other thing? Do you have anything you want to add for us? But we are here to learn. We learn and unlearn. Okay. Thank you, everyone.